that make sense? Hierarchy. Yes. And, and how does the HIE tie into that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the HIE, the Healthcare Information Exchange, tends to happen in a geography. So, for instance, here in Utah, I believe there is a Utah Healthcare Information Exchange. So, the various health systems, Intermountain, Mountain Star, I don't know if there's others here, those are the two I know about, um, can exchange information. So, if I'm in a part of Utah that my health system is not represented in, theoretically that data could be exchanged. Those health exchanges are also used for larger studies. Um, there's a, um, a lot of work being done, I want to say in South Carolina, where they're using the healthcare, the HIE, the Healthcare Information Exchange, to gather data from disparate health systems to look at and tackle that acquired, um, hospital acquired infection. And so, who has what sorts of data and then trying to understand sort of root cause analysis, how do we tackle that? So that's where you get that collect, you get enough data, you get a sample size big enough to tackle some of those questions. Do you find a lot of uh, IS personnel more involved in this, uh, this integration than a biomed would be? Uh, in my, my experience, IS, they, they like to drive that, but they don't even know what the equipment does. You know, where they try to drive all that information mm -hmm. gathering stuff, you know, where... Yep, you're exactly right. So it, does that, do you find that causes you know, conflict or not conflict, but that's not the right word out there. Challenges. Challenges, exactly, <laughs> yes. yes. Unanticipated problems. Yes, yes it does. Um, which is why I say when we've had the opportunity to go into health systems and talk to the IT department about this work that we're doing in terms of collecting this data, the, 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 most of them are, you can do that? I don't have to guess anymore? I don't have, because you're right, they don't, if you, if you sent the typical IT tech out and said, go get this data from all the patient monitors, they'd sort of be like, all right, what's a patient monitor? How do I know what's a patient monitor? So yes, what I'm seeing in progressive organizations is a historic biomed person who has probably self-motivated to get some IT understanding because maybe they had to support imaging or the patient monitors or the something that caused them to begin dabbling and working in that space. Move into, sometimes they, they get completely reassigned to IT and they are the designated liaison back to biomed. Sometimes they stay in biomed and are the designated liaison this way. It, it, it doesn't really matter if you, as long as you've got um, a, a capable person in that role and the leadership of the two, biomed and IT, have to, uh, either have created or are creating a, a, an environment of collaboration. That's what the progressive departments are doing. They're getting that one or two people that can bridge that clinical chasm. But should it be, who should lead the, the charge here? Let's put it that way. I, I think, okay. to be very candid, I think at the end of the day, the CIO is going to have the final say. Okay? Because he or she is responsible for all networks in, their, in the organization. It's usually what most do. The progressive CIO knows that they need to surround themselves and have a collaborative decision made, and that the, it was a process driven, not a hierarchical org chart driven discussion. Um, I, I think Biomed has the ability to um, drive functional sort of operational leadership that the CIO supports, even if you don't report to them right. organizationally. I think we can demonstrate that leadership where the CIO says, shut up and listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Work with him, quit fighting him. I, I, I've seen that happen and that's really a pretty exciting place. Um, I will mention that, that I, the video, or not the, 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 the CEIT um, community, do you know the, that website off the top of your head, Dustin? Uh, I can't remember. What is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a joint venture between Amy, Amy ACCE, and HIMSS. And HIMS. I yeah. would bet that the, um, the presentations that were just done yesterday or the day before um, are posted out on that website. That's probably something you should put on your, on your society website. But we'll there, put it out there. there one, are, of, one of the webmasters will put it out put there. Put it out there. There's, there were two presentations done, one by a gentleman named Steve Merritt, 
at Bay State. And Bay State's a health system I've worked with on several occasions. And Steve is an old biomed guy that's an IT guy now. Okay, He's very involved with the IHE, that standards development. And he's in that role where he lives inside of IT now, bringing them that perspective. Um, there was another, the other presenter, um, I believe his name was Paul Maurer, and he was from Mainline Health in the Philadelphia area. Similar sort of role, but he comes from the IT side, but has developed some biomed capabilities and works closely with the biomed department to bring that expertise into the projects. So sort of two different models that, that could be potentially emulated. Uh, this isn't a question, this is a comment on that, but more and more of the typical systems that Biomed have been involved in and it's been their total realm are now becoming IT uh, interfaced. And sometimes you're hesitant to go out and get IT involved because it adds another layer and <laughs> sometimes IT is not easy to work with. Uh, I've heard that rumor. More often than not. <laughs> but, if you've got a system, like our systems are all becoming that way, but if you've got a system like that, the earlier you involve IT in that, if they don't take the initiative, you need to take the initiative, because the earlier you involve them, the better the outcome. And, and I would take that, when you say earlier, I would take that all the way, if we think about the, the whole life cycle, when you're assessing where you are and planning where you want to go and budgeting, up there in that early part of the life cycle, before you even have it in-house, start having those discussions. What is this technology? What does it mean? How does it fit in the organization? Um, and I'm, I'm blanking again all of a sudden. Um, service level agreement. Here's what I'm going to take care of. Here's what you're going to take care of. And here's what the clinical group's going to take care of. Who's responsible? Who's going to be responsible for what before it ever hits the dock? Start having those discussions. Absolutely. Does it pay that? <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's another point. We can't stay in our little cubby holes. We have got to wander up into the carpeted areas of the hospital. We have to be involved. We have to have those discussions. We have to interject ourselves. Professionally, you don't want to make a career limiting move, but if you bring some of this, these things, bring this data, we have mountains of data that never gets used, except to schedule PMs and show joint commission that we do. Or mountains of information that could be used for capital planning, for clinical line development, all sorts of things. Bring that. A lot of times Biomed gets excluded from that process though. Well, Not even thought of until after the fact. I, I deal with that in my job right now. I absolutely understand that. Which is why you have to interject. You have to just con continue. I mean, almost be annoying. But professionally annoying. Okay? <laughs> you have to be in front of them. You have to demonstrate. You have to ask. Sometimes just asking questions. I don't Wait. What if this? You may already know the answer, or you may think you know the answer, but just asking those questions, what if? Because they may not have thought through the problem from that perspective. Absolutely right. And even if you get caught behind the curve and you're responding, you're reacting, don't react with, oh, they did it to me again. Go in. I mean, you're going to do that downstairs. You know, I do this in my home office. I'm like, oh, God, it's Zoom again. I scream, you know, and then I, hi, this is Carol. How can I help you? You know, you really have to do that. You have to get in there, even in the bad situations and demonstrate your capabilities. Do more than what they think they need you to do so that the next time they will involve you, so they will ask the question, hey, I remember from that last project, what was it you did to fix that other thing? Because I don't want to do that again. They'll do that. 